This video is brought to you by Paperlike, the iPad screen protector that makes writing or drawing on an iPad feel just like paper. Check out the links in the description down below to learn more. What is up guys, Karma Medic here and welcome back to another dose. If you're new to the channel, hi, my name is Nasser and I'm now a third year medical student studying at King's College London and I've used my iPad pretty much every single day since the day that I bought it. I absolutely love it, it's light, it's lightning fast and does everything that I need it to. Now I use the iPad primarily as a note taking device in this position here using Notability to take notes in my medical school lectures. I've wanted a keyboard for the longest time, I've wanted one so bad, but there was never anything good enough on the market and so I waited. And so today, that wait is finally over. Things we don't need. So this is it. This is the new Apple Magic Keyboard. So in today's video, I'm gonna show you and demonstrate to you everything you need to know about the Apple Magic Keyboard so that you can decide if you wanna purchase one for yourself. The first thing that I wanna comment on is this magnetic snapping into place. It is very sturdy. I wouldn't be worried about my iPad falling out or anything, even with a lot of shaking. The second thing that I notice is that this is decently heavy. It's not quite as light as the iPad by itself or the iPad in the smart folio case that I had before. In fact, the case feels almost as heavy as the iPad itself. I'd say the iPad is still a little bit heavier in weight, but I'd say they're pretty close. And just for comparison, I've got my 13 inch MacBook Pro over here. And comparing the two, the MacBook MacBook Pro is definitely heavier, but not by much. They're fairly similar, if I'm honest. As far as the thickness of the iPad with this new keyboard, in case anyone is wondering, now the keyboard itself has two hinges on it. There's the main one down at the bottom over here, which also has a convenient USB-C pass-through in order to charge the device while it's in the keyboard case. And then at the top, there's a second hinge, which allows you to change the iPad to different viewing angles. Now let's move on to talking about every aspect of this thing. All right, let's start by talking about the keyboard. So I'm gonna open up my note-taking app of choice, Notability. Wow, it feels so strange using a keyboard and trackpad on my iPad. All right, I'm gonna select the text box tool and start writing. Hi, my name is Nasser and I'm studying for the USMLE exam. Okay, right off the bat, that feels very, very good. Definitely better than this keyboard that I've been using for the last year and a half or so. In comparison to that keyboard, the travel of the keys is a lot deeper. They feel almost more mushy, like they're a bit softer and have more padding. These keys over here are a lot more hard and clicky. The keyboard is of a normal size, so I don't feel like my hands are cramped close together or anything like that. In fact, I think they're about the same distribution as this one over here. Yeah, it's the exact same size as my normal keyboard. All right, after having typed over there for a little bit, I can confirm that my fingers don't hit the iPad when I'm typing. And if my fingers don't hit the iPad, well then yours probably won't either. I also wanna make the comment that the keyboard itself is not flimsy at all. I've also noticed that the keyboard is actually quieter than the other one which I've been using. I'll let you guys decide for yourself. All right, and now the same sentence typed on my old keyboard. All right, now let's move on to talk about the comfort of this keyboard case on the iPad in different situations. So sitting down at a desk like this, I can definitely say that the viewing angles are more than enough, even for someone like me who's quite tall and might need the iPad tilted back as far as it possibly goes, which is something that I cannot say about the previous keyboard for the iPad. Those viewing angles were always a bit too shallow, something like this, and they never provided me with enough of a tilt to feel comfortable when sitting down and typing. Now, as far as sitting down on a chair goes, maybe you're a student in a large lecture hall and you don't have anywhere to your iPad down. I personally own the 12.9 inch iPad and I will say it's definitely big enough to put down on your lap and not feel that you have to put your knees really close together in order to prevent it from falling down through the gap. However, what I will comment on is that the iPad is definitely top heavy. And what I mean by that is that the majority of the weight of the iPad is over here. It's where the screen is, not down here where the keyboard is as you would see in a traditional laptop. Now, when you're sitting down on a flat surface like a table, this isn't as much of a problem. You'll see that I have to push the iPad quite far back before it starts to fall. Oh, almost. Now, when you have the iPad on your lap, you're naturally in a slightly more downwards bent position. And so it's a little bit easier to reach that point where the iPad can start tipping backwards. But Apple have clearly done some magic design with the balancing over here. It's not easy to get to that position, but it's an accident that could happen. If you're sitting down on a couch, this isn't really something that you need to worry about. It's a lot more stable and your iPad isn't gonna go anywhere. 
Laying down in bed, if I'm quite honest, I never use my iPad like this. It's mostly a productivity machine for me. For the few times that I've used my iPad in bed, it's been quite uncomfortable because there's nothing to rest it against. There's nothing to hold it in place. I kind of just have to hold it like this the whole time. So now that I have this case, I imagine I'm gonna be using it a lot more because I can angle it however I want. I can put it off to the side and it's just so much easier to use. All right, now let's move on to talk about the actual trackpad. And this is probably what I'm most excited about, being able to move through the iPad pages using these gestures and go up halfway to pull up the multitasking, switching between apps. I mean, this is just so, so, so great. I can't wait to incorporate using all of these gestures into my workflow and just make using my iPad that much more of an efficient and pleasant experience. The trackpad itself feels very, very good. It slides around smoothly. The cursor also flows very well on the screen, pretty much exactly what you would expect from the normal Apple trackpads. Of course, the trackpad on the iPad is much smaller, but honestly, I haven't felt it at all. I still feel like my finger has plenty of space to move around, and it's really not something that I've noticed while using the keyboard. The trackpad itself does click, I personally don't click to select things, I just tap on the touchpad and it's good to know that you can do both over here. As you can see, when moving the cursor around the screen, it automatically clicks. It like sort of gets sucked into the next app or the next box that you might want to use. And I actually really like this. It's extremely convenient. Funnily enough, the YouTube app hasn't updated to take advantage of this feature, but I'm sure they will in the future. I find it's very smooth and intuitive. I thought it was gonna be quite annoying, but not at all. Now, before I move on to talk about how the Apple Pencil integrates into this keyboard, case, I want to give a quick shout out to the sponsor of today's video, Paperlike. Now, Paperlike, besides being an actual screen protector that protects your iPad from any scratches or damage that it might take, which also helps prevent those oily fingerprints from showing up on your iPad after you've been touching and using it all day, it actually makes writing or drawing on the iPad feel just like paper, which is something that I found very important in my transition from using pen and paper to going completely paperless and digital in my life. Another great thing about the Paperlike screen protector is that it adds just enough grip so that you don't feel like you're writing on a slippery slab of glass when you're taking notes on the iPad. I'm telling you, it makes it feel just that little bit more like writing on paper. It's something that I write on every single day. It's something that I use every single day. And now that I've used it, I can't imagine taking notes on my iPad without it. If you guys wanna learn more about the iPad screen protector, you can check out the links in the description down below. Now, since writing on the iPad with the Apple Pencil is something that's very important to me, I want to be able to do that using this keyboard case. So let me put it back on real quick. Now, the first thing that I'm very happy to see is that there's a place to keep my Apple Pencil. That's great. But something very important to know is how easy and comfortable is it to write in this position? Because in an ideal world, I could go from writing a script or a document or an essay using the keyboard and then also using the pencil to write handwritten notes. That would be perfect. If I move this as close to me as possible and I tilt it as far back as possible and start writing, not gonna lie, this definitely is not convenient, which is actually what I expected having looked at this keyboard online and everything like that. But I was kind of hoping that I could tilt this in a way or put it in a position that would make it useful for writing. Oh, <gasps> can I press down? Okay, not so much. Okay, okay. So this position very much mimics the writing position that I had using the smart folio case, which was something like this. Very, very similar, right? All right, now if I start writing, let's see what happens. All right, so I very quickly discovered that if you write on the top half of the screen, the weight of your hand is enough to push the keyboard down and out of that convenient writing position. However, if I can just hold it in place, I think it will stay, no? If I place my hand over here, which is where I would naturally rest my hand anyway when sitting down and taking notes with my iPad, I can write towards the top of the screen and it doesn't collapse. So clearly the keyboard case wasn't designed with writing using the Apple Pencil in mind, but having the iPad in this strange backwards upside down configuration is sort of like a temporary fix if you have the keyboard case on you and need to take a small amount of notes, I definitely wouldn't say you can take notes like this for hours on end. So unfortunately, not quite the ideal world that I was hoping for where I could type notes on a keyboard and then take out the Apple Pencil and start writing down handwritten notes like that. Now, if you're gonna take notes using the Apple Pencil in this position over here, you will notice that there is quite a bit of a wobble when you're writing down your notes. And I certainly would not be able to write down any kind of lengthy, complicated notes like you see on the screen here if I was using the iPad in this position. All right, now let's talk about the gesture 
gestures that you can use on the trackpad in order to navigate through your iPad. First things first, if you want to reach the multitasking menu, you take three fingers and move them up, but take a slight pause in the middle, and that's what brings up the multitasking page. You can move left and right through this page by swiping with two fingers, just like this. And if you want to select any of these, of course, you can just click right on it. If you want to go to the home screen from any open application, you take three fingers and swipe up. And if you want to switch through your open applications, you can take three fingers and just swipe left or right. If you want to open hovering applications, you can take your mouse and move it to the far right of the screen and then push right again. You can also swipe through the open multitasking applications that you have here using your three fingers moving left and right. And then if you want to close that, you can just go to the top here and drag that over to the side of the screen. Another convenient thing you can do is open command tab, which opens up all the apps like this. And then you can use command Q to quit those apps and close them. All right. And I think that's about everything that I wanted to talk about with the new Apple Magic Keyboard. If there's anything I forgot to mention or anything you'd like to ask me that wasn't in this video, please do let me know in a comment down below. My overall impressions with the iPad Magic Keyboard case is that if you use a keyboard for your iPad, then this is the one to get. If you're someone who does a lot of typing in their day, for example, if you're a university student or you have lots of essays to write, you do research on your iPad, maybe you write video scripts for YouTube videos on your iPad and you need a keyboard, then this is the one to get. All right, guys, and that is it for me for this video. I really hope that you enjoyed it. And if you did, please do leave me a like on this video and subscribe to my channel to see more content from me in the future. Hope you're having a wonderful day and I will see you in the next one. Peace. And so today, that weight is finally test that for you. Now, when you're sitting down on a table, this isn't as much of a problem. You'll see that I have to push the iPad quite far back before it starts to tilt. There you go. I have it in the...